Uh, my name is Ethan, Ethan Kearns. I'm a materials engineer in my day job. I want to make weighing and measuring of substances um, accessible to everyone. Um, so everything that I'm gonna be showing today and doing today, everything can be purchased for less than the cost of a dinner out at a restaurant. Um, everything on this table, everything you need um, to measure whatever uh, recreational chemical you're doing. It's actually really fascinating because um, alcohol uh, we dose in the tens of grams. Um, Phenibut and GHB we dose in the single gram um, sort of dosing level. Uh, MDMA and methylone, that sort of class, we dose in the hundreds of milligrams. Um, the 2C series we dose in the tens of milligrams. Uh, substituted tryptamines, substituted amphetamines, we dose in the single milligrams. Well, some, some of the more potent hallucinogens are the hundreds of micrograms, and then fentanyl and LSD are um, bioactive in the tens of micrograms range. That is a range of seven orders of magnitude, which is pretty impressive when you think about it. Seven orders of magnitude is sort of the difference between like, you know, let's say a chihuahua and uh, a continent. So actually, I, I brought um, I brought substances in this full range um, for people to look at. I've chosen standard laboratory substances. So this is potassium chloride. Okay, here's a, here's a full bag of 10 grams of potassium chloride, all the way down to one milligram of potassium chloride, which uh, ends up being a couple, a couple grains, like a couple grains of, of sand or sugar or salt. Um, and you just really, you can barely even see it. Um, and this is calcium oxide, and this calcium oxide is very finely powdered. Um, so when we go ahead and place these side by side, what we'll find is that they look very, very different. Um, and what I'm trying to show here is that when people go ahead and eyeball a dose, um, when they put their finger in a bag, um, it's almost impossible to judge how much chemical they're actually getting. One milligram of potassium chloride in sort of crystal form, um, you can barely see. Meanwhile, one milligram of the calcium oxide that's been very finely powdered um, looks like it partially fills the bag, right? There's no way to miss that amount of powder. So that can be true of whatever recreational chemical someone might be doing, um, is depending on how finely powdered it is, um, what color it is, these things, it's almost impossible to judge a dose um, using eyes. I would recommend very strongly against trying to weigh or measure anything under um, a milligram because even with um, laboratory scales in a laboratory setting, under, under one milligram is an amount of powder that will stick to anything with static. It's just, don't attempt it. I would leave it to the professionals. When I started my uh, sort of career in science about 15 years ago, uh, if you wanted to own a milligram scale, uh, you were gonna pay hundreds of dollars for it, a large thing to sit on a desk that was very difficult to keep in calibration. Nowadays, anyone, anyone, can get a milligram scale uh, on Amazon, on any online vendor website for $20, which is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful. However, just because you have a scale doesn't mean you're using it properly. Um, you see I have my scale in the, in the package it came from. Uh, I just like to leave my scale in here because it was, it was made um, for this scale. It has everything sort of you know, cut out for it. And so this is a nice way to, to take good care of it. So the way that these scales work um, is that they're very sensitive, however, they are not very accurate at the very lower end of their range. So part of the reason that we have this dish is to actually put some weight on the scale and get it into the middle range of what it can weigh. So if you were trying to weigh 10 or 20 milligrams just on this little plate right here, it wouldn't be very accurate. So all of these scales come with these little calibration weights, just sits inside of here. Pop on the calibration weight, make sure your scale is working properly. I'm reading 10 point, uh, 10.002, uh, so that's, so in theory, my scale is two milligrams off right now, which is really, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty fantastic uh, level of accuracy. These scales do not work well unless they are level. Um, so if you are trying to measure things on a hillside, um, or on, frankly on any sort of angle whatsoever, um, you'll find that it is uh, extremely inaccurate. Don't do it on your bed. You wanna try to find the flattest surface that you can. Um, so this is kind of an extreme angle, but I want to see what this will do to it. So I've now placed, uh, placed a sharpie under there, and we'll see what this will read. Yeah, okay, so now the calibration weight, instead of reading 10.002, is reading 9.86. This platter, it has this nice little uh, 
um, pouring spout, as if you were to put powder on the uh, platter of the scale and pour it into something. That's not what you should do. <laughs> These, uh, the powders that we'll be dealing with um, will stick to anything. Um, they'll stick via static, they'll stick via humidity. Um, so we actually don't want to use this, this uh, platter to, to pour powder off of. Uh, what we want to do is we want to use uh, gelatin capsules. If I'm ever going to uh, be doing any delicate work here with a scale or with capsules, I like to put on gloves. Um, not because I need the gloves to protect me from anything, but because as soon as I put on these gloves, I am immediately aware of my hands and what they're doing. Humans are naturally moist, naturally clammy, uh, some of us more than others. Um, so that these gelatin capsules uh, like to absorb water in particular. That, that's, that's why they work so well. Um, it's because they uh, quickly absorb water and then dissolve. So if you were to be weighing out um, substances in like the low milligram range, um, your wet fingerprints alone could be several milligrams and could give you a poor, poor reading. So I just pulled out some party straws for a couple dollars online. And, and actually I think this is often the aha moment for people where the light bulb in their head uh, goes on, which is that all you need to do is go ahead and snip this straw like that um, and snip it at an angle and you now have the perfect implement uh, for taking substances out of a bag and loading it into a capsule um, because this angled straw will fit into any size capsule you're using um, and this straw, will it's just perfect. It's, it's the perfect tool. I mean, frankly, a paper straw would be better than nothing. Uh, it'd be better than trying to, I don't even know how you do it without a straw or you know, people use a key sometimes to pull powder out of a bag. You might notice that I have a colorful variety of, you know, just very happy, wonderful, shiny, glittery capsules right here. Um, and this isn't just because I am a colorful, shiny, glittery person and like these things in my life. Um, this itself is actually a risk reduction tactic. Uh, we have this variety of colors and capsules um, so that you can fill one color of capsule with one particular substance at one particular dosage. And people know exactly what's inside, where if you were putting different chemicals at different dosages inside the same color capsule, as soon as you hand it to someone, as soon as this capsule is out of your hands, nobody knows what's inside it anymore. Just try to make this as, uh, as inebriation proof as possible. Uh, let's, let's call this technique. These, uh, these gelatin capsules just cost almost nothing. Uh, I purchased them from Amazon. Um, there's also a great website, Capsule USA, um, that I'm not associated with. I'm not advertising for them. But they have many colors of capsules that you can buy a thousand at a time for approximately six dollars. Um, so the, the, all of the capsules that you see here sitting on this table, all of these colors, this probably costs fifteen dollars in total. And they're adorable, they're beautiful. Who doesn't want shiny glittery capsules um, going into their body? Traditional wisdom says that you should use the tear function on a scale. So I've now put the capsule on, I can see that it weighs um, almost exactly 100 milligrams, and then you would hit tear, and the scale resets at zero. So now you can pull the capsule off and then proceed to measure. Um, and what I will tell you is that using tear is actually the wrong way to weigh out substances. Um, and I'll show you why. Because now this scale is teared at 100 milligrams um, for the weight of this capsule, and I am going to start weighing. Um, what's gonna happen after about 30 seconds is that this scale is gonna turn off. Um, and when the scale turns off, you actually lose the tear. Um, so you lose the record of what the capsule that you're loading into actually weighs. It would be great if these scales would stay on for a minute or two at a time. Uh, but they don't. And there you go. So the scale just turned off. Um, and even with my skilled hands, um, with the bag and the capsule ready, uh, I didn't have time to fill the capsule um, before the scale turned off. Uh, luckily, I looked at the, uh, the weight of the capsule when I put it on, and I saw the weight of the capsule was 100 milligrams. So that makes it really easy to put in another 100 milligrams. I know that the scale and the substance, or sorry, the, the capsule and the substance should weigh a total of 200 milligrams. Um, these gelatin capsules are really convenient in that you can fit them together without locking them. Um, so right now the, the capsule has been sort of placed together, um, but it just slides in and out, you can see. Um, so let's go ahead and put this on. Um, I put in way too much substance. I put in 160, I put in 260 milligrams. 
So I just dumped some out. And now we're at, okay, now we're at 2, 211. You also don't want to be doing this in wind um, because if you're trying to weigh very fine um, amounts of substances in the wind, you're just going to be, your, your scale is going to be blowing around and the, the measurement's going to be flying all over the place. So if you are in a festival, you know, in like sort of the, the camping environment, do it inside your tent, not outside your tent, uh, and try to get as flat a surface as possible. So I'm going to pour just a little bit out. See if we can hit 100 milligrams on the nose. Let's see, not quite. Okay, so we're still at, we're at 108. So I'm gonna call that good. Now this capsule is prepared, I'm gonna lock it. And the way I lock it is you just press. And I just uh, pressed it closed. And now this capsule, uh, it won't just come open. It won't just slide in and out. Um, it's locked closed. You can still open the capsule. If you grip it tightly uh, and sort of rotate it, you can pull the halves apart. So this capsule now contains 108 milligrams of potassium chloride, and it's not gonna fall apart in my bag, and I'm ready to go. Um, again, these little plastic bags, uh, you can get a thousand of them, uh, purchase them on Amazon, purchase them online for a few dollars. They cost nothing. 108 milligrams of potassium chloride. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the bag. And with this nice, uh, this, this bag has a nice white stripe on it that sort of holds uh, Sharpie ink uh, better for longer periods of time. Uh, no one is gonna mistake this. These scales are, are great, but again, they will often be plus or minus three, plus or minus four milligrams. The difference between, let's say, a, a 19 milligram experience um, and a 15 milligram experience um, would be quite significant for, for a lot of people. How do we get around that? And the answer is volumetric measurements. If, if we want, say, a 20, a 20 milligram dose of 2CB, um, for five people, if we measure out 100 milligrams, plus or minus four, and then just divide that by the, the five doses that we want, we're, we're gonna take that error and cut it by the amount of doses that we've just made. Doing this is a really um, powerful way to remove uh, error, remove that error from your measurements. So I am going to show you how to make um, a solution um, from this in a way that's easy to deal with. And I only like to deal with powers of 10 because powers of 10 are really easy. So in this case, I'm going to take this 108 milligrams of potassium chloride and make a solution as if it was a potent substance like 2CB. These disposable one uh, milliliter syringes um, come from, again, Amazon, come from online. Uh, these syringes cost, uh, there's a there's hundred in this box. I think this box costs six, six dollars. They are uh, listed as disposable, uh, like one-time use. Uh, you can certainly use these over and over and over again. Uh, you can see the syringe is one milliliter. It, it actually has down to one hundredth of a milliliter marks on here. I wouldn't trust it to one hundredth of a milliliter. We're not gonna be dealing with amounts of water that small. Um, or amounts of, amounts of solvent. Um, I'm gonna put this 108 milligrams, and now a little bit less because I spilled some, 108 milligrams of potassium chloride um, into a 10 milliliter solution. So here is the bottle that I'm going to use. That's two. That's three. That's nine. That's 10. So there's now 10 milliliters of water in here. And we are going to open our capsule up and just go ahead and dump in the 100 milligrams of chemical. 10 milliliters, 100 milligrams. It's very simple. We have 10 milligrams per milliliter. Um, powers of 10, make it nice and easy. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color it. Just put in a drop of food coloring because the last thing that we want is for somebody to think that this is water. Because it is not water. Um, it is water with some, some drug involved. So now, uh, this solution is now very brightly colored and nobody will mistake it for water. Maybe Kool-Aid, but it, someone will think twice before they just go ahead and put this in their body. Right now, not in 10 minutes, not in half an hour, not before I leave for the event that I'm going to, but right now, I'm going to write the concentration of this solution on the bottle in Sharpie. 10 milligrams per milliliter of potassium chloride, KCl. 
unmistakable. And what I'm gonna do actually to even make this more permanent is now that I've written this on the bottle, I'm just gonna put some packing tape over the label. So now that label is absolutely never gonna come off. No matter how much you rub this bottle, this is labeled. Um, so this can never be mistaken as something, you'll never lose track of the concentration. This is just a Sharpie, you know, packing tape, um, any sort of, you can use a mason jar, any sort of small bottle works. A water bottle works if you label it and color um, the solution. So I think almost everyone has heard stories of having a liquid solution of some potent chemical and having it be way higher of a dose than they expected. Um, and in many cases that is because um, the carrier, the actual solvent, um, has evaporated out and concentrated the solution. If you think about it, if alcohol is evaporating out through the threads of this, you know, say we happen to leave it open for a couple hours, um, this solution is gonna reduce by half. So suddenly our solution is twice as potent. I would advocate as much as possible for using the power of the scale and using uh, the power of gelatin capsules to pre-make, um, to pre-weigh substances. So this is infrastructure that it's really, really easy, really cheap, over the counter, anyone can own these. Um, no problem at all. It's easy, it's fun, science, but with things that you put in your body.